Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of the Alpha Life here. Now let's hope that you're all excited. We're finally starting a, the round for the Amar Alpha Life, the Amarian Alpha Life. And we're gonna be starting off with this new character, which is of course Amar. He is currently Omega for some strange reason. I am not exactly sure why. I had some Plex in my wallet, but I haven't spent it and I don't know why they gave me the Omega for free this time. But as you can see, I have no skills training and all my skills are absolutely alpha skills. Maybe by the end of the series, I will show you that all my skills are still alpha skills. So we're going to move on to start off with our first ship. It'll be a beautiful executioner, an amazing fast and incredible executioner and we're gonna be using it if you have been watching the series and saw the corporal launcher we're gonna be using it to run combat exploration sites and some first level or level one missions and this is gonna be important because as usual we will be trying to look up to those level three missions and in this particular character we haven't gotten those so you will actually see the the trip that I actually currently use to be able to get to those level 3 missions, which will be quite honestly a lot of fun. So we're going to start off by seeing what we have in this feed that we're going to be using for this first episode. We're going to start off with three small focused anode pulse particle streams one and with the one core probe launcher one in the high slots. Then in the mid slots, we're going to move on to a 1MN YS8 compact afterburner a small compact PV acid cap battery, an Eutectic compact cap recharger. Then in the low slots, we're gonna move on to extruded compact heatsink, an IFIA damage control. I would recommend you use another damage control if you're just buying this fit. I use this one because this one I have been getting from low sec belt ratting and you can actually get them from uh, rat drops. So that's why I have this one, but I recommend you go for the tech one or the tech two. Next, we're going to move on to a small 1A Enduring Armor Repair. Why Enduring? So that it allows us to still be cap stable. Next, up in the rigs, we're going to be having a small Energy Burst Deriator so that it can help us a little bit with the damage. As you can see, this ship doesn't do a lot of damage, but well, that's all right. It does more than enough for our purposes. Next, we're going to move on to a small Auxiliary Nano Pump 1, two of those, so that we can actually rip a lot more damage than we would without these rigs. Of course, I have a little bit more ammunition. I have some standard crystals and we are currently rocking some multi-frequency small crystals so that we can do the damage. So what are we going to be starting off with? I have already recorded a few combat sites and I would like to start this part of the series with missions. As you know, this is the loyalty point store that I'm going to be using for the Emperor family. And as you know, there are several resources in the internet where we can see what is worth getting and what is better to buy with loyalty points. But mainly we want to start off level one missions, not because of the loyalty points, but because they will open up the doors for level two and level three missions. So how do we find a good place, a good spot to run missions? We're going to go to the agency. Let's just go back in the agency. We're going to find this tab which is called agents and missions and i like doing mission agents and security agents these are going to be the ones that give you combat uh, missions this is important because there are other type of agents and we're not going to focus on those right now so we have one in this current station as you can see i'm in the amarian trade hub in amar so let's start off and what we're going to do is copy the name of the mission and go to EVE University, paste the name of the mission, search it, and this one is for Blood Raiders. How do we know it's for Blood Raiders? Well, there it is. The Blood Raider flag, Blood Raiders. So, now we are going to go down and see if we lose any standings with this one. Apparently we don't, and the best damage to deal is EM and Thermal, and the best damage to resist ECM and thermal. So we are absolutely good to go and shouldn't have any problems at all. So let's undock and get up to that uh, 
mission and let's run it as fast as we can so that you can also see why I like using this particular ship because it's really fast and we don't really need a micro wall drive with it with the afterburner on we go just a little bit over a thousand meters a second which is really really nice as you may remember with most other frigates that we have used in the series an afterburner just is not enough to get over that 1000 meters a second so this is going to be really really nice we get to the acceleration gate and get ready to get into the first room so of course this feat is thought as a starting point for characters so that you can do your career agent missions and all of that stuff as fast as possible and that's the main focus of this feat plus it's extremely cheap just for that reason so that you can start off as fast as possible and without any issues at all so we're gonna approach everything and maybe you would want to keep at range some of them because as you can see our optimal range is outside of 3000 kilometers so I just set my range, right clicking the set range, keep any distance and you left click this one and you set it to 3000 meters. So I'm going to start off by getting close to these two guys and just popping them as soon as we get into range. We get a little bit better range with lasers from 3 to 6000 meters than we, do with, than we did with blasters in the Galente one. But, well, it's actually really nice and really appreciated after having to get so close and personal with the blasters. This is definitely uh, an interesting difference between the, the Empires, how everyone runs their guns and the kind of ranges that they do have. So we're going to go to the next group. Let's see what we have. Okay, there are four of them. And we haven't really had any problem with anyone so far. We haven't even had to start off our armor repair. So we are doing really good. And especially if you're considering to be the Anamar Alpha, I really do recommend you stick to the Amar market. Unlike Rens and Heck in the Minmetar character, the Amar market will also has uh, slightly higher prices. It doesn't have them quite as high as Rens and Heck, so I think it's a really good trade hub and it's a really busy trade hub, so that's actually really appreciated after the struggle that we had in, in the Minmatar market. But yeah, as you can see, we are closing in fairly fast, not having any trouble. Of course, you can run these missions in a destroyer, maybe you want to run them in a Dragoon, maybe you want to run them in a Coercer, in a long range Coercer. But that will be absolutely up to you, and we will definitely be making feats for those ships uh, eventually. Let's just, first of all, finish up with the frigate feats, and then we will be able to move on to the destroyer feats. Plus, I think everyone, or at least a lot of people, if you have been watching the Eve Online YouTube for long enough, you have seen the Punisher abyssal ones which are just great uh, i haven't run a punisher in a t1 abyssal but i am positively sure that it can be run in a t0 so we are definitely going to move on to that one for the next episode i don't know whether to make another fit or to steal someone else's fit because there are so many around the internet but we will get to that bridge when we get there so, I'm just gonna loot everything, of course, if you're just starting out, you're gonna want to loot everything. And since I haven't been in a Mars space for quite a long time, I'm gonna want to just loot stuff to see how much do we actually make and whether or not this will be better or worse than running missions in Midmatar or in the land space.
course, if you have been watching my armor repair and wondered why it's on, well, it's on because we are absolutely cap stable with this fit and shouldn't have any problems leaving it on. So we move on to the next room, hopefully the last room. And let's turn on that afterburner, get a little bit of speed and get ready to just blast everyone off. So now that we are done with the mission, let's just loot and move on to the next one. I don't necessarily kill everything in the missions that I run, but if you feel like completing everything and taking everyone down, especially if you're just starting out so that you can get these modules, I really do recommend that you do so, that you take everyone out and well, wait to complete the mission until everything has been destroyed just because well you might get some extra loot and you will get some extra disc from bounty so i really do recommend it but as you can see our ship had absolutely no issues running level one missions of course the distances are a little bit annoying but well it is what it is and now that we are here let's deliver this mission complete the mission we get some loyalty points, we get some good ISK, and that gets us ready for moving on. Fortunately, I have already unlocked the level 2 missions, but I haven't exactly unlocked the level 3s. So, we are going to be seeing in a few episodes how am I going to be running these level 2 missions. Of course, you will need a cruiser to be able to do that, but it's definitely doable. Now... Let's go on, get out there and look around for some combat sites. So we have gotten a drone infestation asteroid field. It mentions it as a drone. 3 out of 10. We will actually go in and try to see how well we can actually do this site. If, if we can actually complete this site with this feed, as you can see. It's a DD complex for rogue drones, and the good thing about running the MR Empire is that your D drone damage that you will be doing is already perfect to the drone resistances that they will be having. So, with drones, you mainly want to do electromagnetic and thermal damage, and that's exactly the type of damage that we are able to do with our guns. So, we shouldn't have that much of a problem with them. Okay, well, let's just try the drone site and see how well we do. So we are going to get on straight forward for the container. They are quite far away, so I do recommend I will be making a video of a Dragoon feat. I do recommend that you do this in a long range, in a longer range, either in a coercer, a long range coercer, or in a dragoon. But well, here we are, we got it. Let's see if we can actually finish up the site with our little frigate, with our great little tech one frigate. And well, I think we shouldn't really have any problems with it. But let's try to see whether or not we can do it. So we're only going, getting grazing shots, so I'm gonna keep him at range of 3000 so that we can get a better transfer against the drones and apply a little bit more damage. Now let's go back to our container. 
I don't know what that is, but it might be good, it might not. It doesn't really seem to cost a lot, so let's check it out. Shop info, industry, tritanium and noxium. Okay, well, not great, not the worst. Let's go to the red container. That one might actually be more valuable. As you can see so far, we haven't even had to activate our armor rig there, so that means that we are doing absolutely amazing in the tanking department. We shouldn't really have any problems at all. Okay, we got a little bit of Overseer's personal effects. Which is not amazing, but well, it is guaranteed risk because it is sold to NPC stations, so we're gonna take that. And we take down the rest of the drones. Okay, so we do need to take everyone else out. So yeah, let's go activate that gate and see how well we can do all of this. Well, it does take a little bit of a while, but so far it's not so much time. And well, we're not having any problems, not even with tank. We are armor tanked and our shield is still at 83%, so we are doing great, amazingly, I would say. Ooh, we got another co cosmic signature, so I don't know this was all that I hadn't explored before so let's try to see because this room is being so nice to us let's try to get it and see if we can actually get a 2 out of 10 or something like that so we get them on patches okay. ah, how are we going to attack this one I don't think this is going to be a signature, it's going to be a combat sign. What's going on? I don't know, the, the armor repair just preemptively because, as you know, we are absolutely quite stable and we shouldn't really have any problems with it. Mm. Let's see. Okay, we're getting some more damage. But everything is okay, we're doing good, we're just taking down drones. We're not even on armor yet. So yeah, now I am pretty convinced this will not be a combat site, but well, you know, it is what it is. Sometimes we get them, sometimes we don't, and we still get a search for them. You know, combat exploration, that's a big part of the activity, the exploration part. drones. Yeah, that aside, we're not interested in that. So let's close it up. And as you can see, so far we are doing okay. We are taking damage, okay. We're not having any problems, even though this was rated as a 3 out of 10. We're not really having any issues, any problems. And we are just slowly but surely taking these drones out. Okay, with some overseer's personal effects. And I think I'm just gonna 
take down from the traps fast, just in case we get something at the end of the run. But yeah, thank you all very much. Let's head on to the next one. So we just got a hideout, well another one, I got one a few minutes ago which was absolutely empty and I don't know if it was a demon or if there was a problem with the site but it was just empty and wasn't despawning uh, but yeah, we're gonna try to run this one and see how well our little kit does while I hunt down this other cosmic signature so the other side didn't even have an NPCs, it just was empty, so let's hope that doesn't happen this time. Okay, so we actually got some people on this one, which is great. So we are all done with these guys, let's go activate the acceleration gate and get into the next one. Okay. Let's switch to frequency so we can do Optimal damage, which well, optimal damage isn't really much, it's just a one with GPS. But, but, yeah, and well, the good thing about this one is uh, that we can use it for both mission running, for high sec combat exploration, and it's going to perform really nicely. Okay, this destroyer is still a little bit of damage. But we shouldn't really have any problems with them, no problems. That's all, so far. Do you want to start looking? So, I was looking around the EP University to see exactly what it was I had to destroy, and it's this one, the Sanchez Minor Refinery. This one should. I don't know if it will spawn the. It doesn't say if you need to destroy the refinery to spawn the Overseer. Mm. But, well, we will try and see if we actually can to spawn. So instead of a DD spawn, we got this escalation. So let's see what we have to do to work it. We go to exploration, escalations. 
set destination is nine the drums okay let's try to do it as fast as we can i'm gonna of course i'm not gonna to see through nine jumps of just traveling but i will come back to you guys once we're there we have finally nine jumps later arrived at our destination and i am making a final jump to be able to get into the site so let's see what waits for us over there okay quite a lot of stuff so let's start picking them off one by one shall we So we did manage to kill the two Sanchez spawn that we got, but oh my god, there's a book. And did we get the next escalation? No. So that's it, that's where our escalation ends. Uh, is there anything interesting around? Oh. So yeah, we are going to go back to phase to try and find either some more combat sites or to try and start running those level 1 missions. So, we are getting back into our home station. I was taking a good look at our uh, video runtime and I thought that was cutting it pretty much well enough. So, we are back at the station and, well, let's see how you guys like the Amarian Alpha Live series. Let's hope you enjoy it. Again, if you have any feats, any ships you would like me to try, any activities you would like me to try out in this series, please do let me know. And of course, I will, as long as it's in the budget and alpha available, I will definitely do it. So, everyone, thank you all so very much for watching. Please consider giving me a like, a subscribe if you enjoy the content that I have been making. I very much would appreciate it. So, thank you all so very much for watching. This has been the Alpha Knife, and I will see you all in the next one.